Thank you, everybody, for joining with us today. Obviously, we're here to talk about the border. Uh, I want to thank everybody who is up here with me today. Uh, we got uh, the chair of the House Appropriations Committee, uh, Greg Bonin. We have the Speaker of the House, Dave Phelan. We have the Lieutenant Governor, Dan Patrick, and the Chair of Senate Finance, uh, Jane Nelson, as well as members of both the Texas House and Senate who gather with us for this announcement. Let me start by saying this, and, th and that is the problems that people are suffering on the border just continue to get worse. And they're getting worse for the residents who live in that region. They're getting worse for people in all regions across the entire state of Texas. If you just look at the numbers, they paint the picture. Look at the number of people who were apprehended coming across the border last April when President Trump was president. They apprehended just over 17,000 people coming across the border last year. This year, in the month of April, they apprehended more than 170,000 people. That is a 1,000% increase in the number of people apprehended coming across the border year over year. Similar numbers were echoed in the month of May. Also, the, num the, the, the type of people coming across the border is changing. Early on, it was unaccompanied minors. Now, a majority of the people coming across the border are adults coming across alone. Also, what is changing is the carnage that is being caused by the people who are coming across the border. Fences of ranchers along the border are being completely decimating, causing uh, border ranchers to lose their livestock or border farmers to lose their crops. Homes are being invaded. Neighborhoods are dangerous and people are being threatened on a daily basis with guns of people either coming across the border or those working with those who are coming across the border. Cartels, human and drug smugglers, and human traffickers, they, they're all profiting off of our open border crisis. They're making money off the people that have come in from more than 150 different countries across the entire globe. Anybody who tells you this is people coming across from Mexico or from the Northern Triangle, they're missing the point about the massive consequence of all the countries across all the entire globe that people are coming from, and they will either fly in or somehow get into Mexico or uh, get in South America and make their way up to come across the border into Texas and into other states. And make no mistake, the border crisis that we're dealing with right now is a direct result of the open border policies that have been put into place by the Biden administration. Remember that the border was far more under control under the Trump administration until President Biden came in and removed the remain in Mexico policy. And he's about to remove, according to his administration, the Title 42 policy. And obviously they are now not making any effort whatsoever in, to construct the wall. In fact, they are abandoning finishing the wall along the border. But the biggest difference between the two administrations is a difference in commitment. There was a commitment by the prior administration to actually enforce the immigration laws that were passed by the United States Congress. Make no mistake, the current administration is refusing to enforce the laws concerning immigration that are on the books passed by the United States Congress. Well, in response to the federal government's neglect of all of the people who live along the border and the other people who live inland who are facing the consequences because of the spread of drugs like fentanyl, Texas is stepping up and doing more than any other state ever has done to respond to these challenges along the border. Because of these leaders that you see at this table right now, as well as the members behind them, they just passed a budget adding more than a billion dollars dedicated to border security in the state of Texas for Texas to do the federal government's job. These are Texas taxpayer dollars that Texans should not have to, have to be paying for because the federal government has a legal responsibility under the federal immigration laws to do it. But because they are not doing it, Texas taxpayers are having to step up so that we as a state can protect our citizens.
addition to that, in March of this year, because the Biden administration was, was abandoning its responsibility, I launched Operation Lone Star. That included the, uh, the deployment of a thousand Texas Department of Public Safety officers. It included the deployment of the National Guard. And they've been making arrests. They've made over 1,500 arrests already. They've already apprehended more than 35,000 people coming across the border illegally. But it's clear that this Operation Lone Star, as prolific as the results have been, it's clear that more is needed. And the people who made that clear are the counties on the border. Because what the counties on the border did, they sent me a disaster declaration that the counties made requesting that the governor of Texas make a disaster declaration for the counties on the border. Now, the governor makes disaster declarations when we have hurricanes come in, sometimes when tornadoes occur, sometimes when floods may occur. I am unaware of a governor ever declaring a disaster at, at county requests because of the tidal wave of illegal immigrants coming across the border wrecking havoc in communities and residents who live here in Texas. And since I went down to Del Rio last week, what I talked to sheriffs and county judges at that time about was to issue a second disaster declaration for which there are more than two dozen counties who already want to be a part of it, even though the new disaster declaration has not even been issued yet. But it's going to concentrate on making arrests on the border of people who are coming across. So the Department of Public Safety will work with local officials to arrest anybody who enters our state illegally for uh, for violations such as trespass, for vandalism, for criminal mischief, for smuggling. Speaking of which, the people that you're looking up here right now, the members of the Texas House and Texas Senate, they passed a new smuggling law that makes it easier for prosecutors to be able to prosecute smuggling in the state of Texas, and I applaud them for passing that. And the prosecutors in the region were urging and begging for it so that they would be able to prosecute these smugglers. And you will see that there is going to be a lot more people put into jail, people who are crossing the border illegally and trespassing, or people who are engaging in the smuggling process or drug smuggling process or any of these crimes that are occurring anywhere. But we wanted to make sure they had the tools and the resources they need to be able to put those people in jail. But that does mean that more jail space will be needed. And to help accommodate that, the Texas Commission on Jail Standards is working with counties to be able to expand jail space. To enhance, but before I go there, let me say this. I want to applaud and thank fellow states across America. When I was in Del Rio, I had an, an announcement that night about how uh, myself as well as the Arizona Governor Doug Ducey uh, we entered into a, a multi-state compact, or we triggered a multi-state compact that responds to emergencies and disasters. And we asked governors of other states to join in with us to help address the disaster that we're facing. And there have been a number of states that have already offered support or are working with their office about support, and they include our neighbors, Oklahoma and Arkansas. It stretches up to North Dakota and South Dakota. It includes Iowa and Florida, and already Georgia and South Carolina have sent their National Guard to the Texas border, and we appreciate all of them as well as others that I may be unaware of yet because this is happening as we speak right now. But for every state stepping up, just know that the people of the state of Texas, your fellow Americans, appreciate you stepping up. But I'll, I'll add this. For all the states that are stepping up to help Texas, you're helping your own residents, if nothing else, by helping to prevent or reduce the amount of fentanyl that is coming into the United States. Let me give you some quick numbers that are very important. In just the first four months of this year, just the Texas Department of Public Safety had an 800% increase in the amount of fentanyl uh, that they had apprehended coming across the border. In just the four, first four months of this year, just the Texas Department of Public Safety, they apprehended enough fentanyl 
to kill more than 21 million Americans. And that fentanyl goes to states across the entire country. Every state helping out Texas. You're helping your own citizens and residents in your state from dealing with this deadly drug coming to neighborhoods near you. Well, the ability for us to be able to arrest people coming across the border is going to be enhanced by Texas building border barriers. Some of those barriers are being built immediately, and that includes things like fencing. That is taking place as we speak during this press conference right now. As we speak, there are state agencies talking to landowners on the border about putting up fencing on their private land to be able to prevent the dramatic influx that these landowners have been suffering from over the past few months. These immediate barriers are truly just a stopgap effort to slow the incredible inflow of migrants into Texas. But they do create what are considered to be no trespass zones that can lead to arrest trespassers. When there is a barrier up that will have on it do not trespass signs, anybody who comes through or around uh, or near that barrier is subject to being arrested for aggravated trespass and because these counties are subject to a disaster declaration, the penalties for that trespass have been enhanced so that they are at a minimum a class B misdemeanor or potentially a class A misdemeanor, which means they could spend a long time behind jail for violating the trespass laws of Texas. But listen, we know that temporary barriers and fences won't be enough to slow the flow of the record amount of illegal immigration that's taking place. That's why today we are announcing that Texas will build a border wall in our state to help secure our border. Here's uh, how the process is going to begin and how it will be structured. We start by hiring a program manager. This, this is going to be a large scale construction project that needs a program manager to oversee it. The program manager in turn will hire contractors and subcontractors to complete the project. I can add this and that is to speed the process as well as to lower the cost of the project the project, manor, the project manager can look to land that's already owned either by the state of Texas or owned by the local governments or owned by private citizens who want to volunteer that land for locations where a border wall can be placed. <clears throat> My belief based upon conversations that I've already had is that the combination of state land as well as volunteer land will yield hundreds of miles to build a border wall in Texas. The program manager and the contractors, once they get to work, they will be able to provide us with a more accurate estimate of what the cost will look like going forward. To get all of this going, we need to hire the program manager, and that process begins right now. I am signing a letter that is from me directed to the executive director of the Texas Facilities Commission. It says in just a couple of sentences of it, it says, as the state agency in charge of procuring, building, and managing state-owned property, your work is central to building projects in our state. I hereby direct the Texas Facilities Commission to hire a program manager to oversee construction of a Texas border wall. A program manager will lead the process of planning and scoping the project and hiring the contractors and subcontractors needed to build the wall. <laughs> Building the wall in Texas has officially begun. Next is funding. A letter that we are about to sign provides $250 million to be allocated as a down payment to begin the border wall. That's a quarter of a billion dollars 
and it's more than enough to hire the project manager and the contractors and to begin building the wall. And we are committed to adding more resources as needed going forward. I'm gonna start, I'll start with you all down here. Let me see, Kennedy, you sign it and keep a pen. <laughs> This program is officially funded in the state of Texas. Today, I am also sending a letter to President Biden. His administration is refusing to finish the border wall on land that the federal government took from our fellow Texans. I am demanding that the Biden administration immediately return to Texans land that the federal government took to build the wall. Texas will talk to those property owners about Texas using that land to build the wall. President Biden, return Texas land to Texans. Now, I know for a fact that many Texans and many Americans want to get involved in this process. Many have already sent checks to the state of Texas for this purpose, and many more have a desire to do so. And we want to give them an opportunity to donate. One place they can donate to is at this sign right here. If you look at this, this provides a donation site, as well as a site where you can find out more information about what the process is about building the border wall. Go to borderwall.texas.gov and front and center is going to be a red icon you can click on for the purpose of donating. Again, that is borderwall.texas.gov. If you want to send a check by mail like we've already received, we have an address designated for that. Send it to Texas Border Wall, P.O. Box 13226. Austin, Texas, 78711. That's Texas Border Wall, P.O. Box 13226, Austin, Texas, 78711. I know the media will be very interested on the transparency and accountability of this money. Know that it's going to be overseen by two agencies. One is the Texas Division of Emergency Management. The other is the Office of, of the Governor. And we expect full transparency and accountability so the public will know all the money coming in and how that money is being used. The bottom line is this. The Biden administration has abandoned its responsibility to apply federal law to secure the border and to enforce the immigration laws. And Texans are suffering as a consequence of that neglect by the Biden administration. In the federal government's absence, Texas is stepping up to get the job done. We will build the wall, we will secure the border, but most importantly, we will restore safety to the citizens who live in the Lone Star State. I'm going to turn it over to